Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. And this season, inshallah, we'll be going through other maraja and also their um, verdicts in regards to Islamic law. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Ma, we were discussing youth in the past, well, past couple of episodes. And I think one issue in regards to the youth, and maybe it's you know because they're quite immature. I, you know, I was similar as well as as an immature person. Was that you know you tend to sometimes look for faults in people, and sometimes you want to highlight people's shortcomings. Has the Sayyid Samah to say has he actually addressed this issue of youth trying to find faults in people? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد. سمعت نشيلة منشن the fatwa of the Sayyid he says that it is uh, strictly prohibited and it's haram to uh, look into people's uh, faults and wrongdoings and try to spread it, especially today with the uh, widespread of the social media and how, uh, for example, rumors are spread through these media and how some people are exposed in their own homes and, and uh, places in which um, they are worldwide exposed, their pictures, their life, for example, uh, privacy. Um, so this is all wrong and it's haram to expose someone's life, someone's uh, fault, someone's who did a mistake or something wrong and then you try to uh, spread this around the, uh, the community, the friends and so forth. No, of course, we're, we're not allowed into breaching the privacy of others. Uh, you have your own life, let others have their own life. And if there's something, let's say, uh, in terms of the shari'i hukum, there's something is committed, haram, in the public place, then you can come forward and speak about it and warn that individual and then talk to others that this individual is trying to spread uh, this haram or this act of uh, sin within the community. He wants to deviate the community, for example, the youth, for example. This is a different step that you can take. But otherwise, if I look with ill suspicion towards my fellow brothers, then this will cause, of course, uh, enmity, hatred, even fight, and harm to uh, each other. And that is, of course, not allowed. So what about, you know, sometimes someone might have made a mistake or may have sinned or something, but then they've repented. Um, you know, do we still have a right? To, to discuss what, what happened and um, you know, the actual situation, the event? Well, it is not permissible, again, not allowed to uh, raise such issues in which, let's say, were committed, let's say a sin committed in privacy and th that individual repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the one who accepts the repentance and he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will conceal this sin which was committed by this uh, servant of Allah on the Day of Judgment. In, in a way, that narration says that even Allah will make the malak to forget that this individual committed this sin. So how can we come uh, forward and we try to expose this individual that th this person in such a date, in such a place, committed such a, a great sin, for example? Allah SWT likes to protect uh, the sanctity of the believer of the mu'min, to protect the sanctity, to protect the mu'min's privacy. So we are not allowed, we have no permission to come forward and expose what others did, for example, in their privacy, be it a sin or something else. Shaykhna, living here in the West, um, you know, we have um, a lot of nicknames for one another. Um, and the youth always coming up with new and inventive ways to, to you know, label and, and call their peers. Um, if one does not consent to 
a nickname, are we allowed to actually use that name to, to identify him or her? No, it's again not permissible. Um, people are respected um, by their names. We call them by their names, by their surnames. The names in which they like to be called sometimes at the agnomen, the laqab, for example, Abu Ahmad, Abu Muhammad, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, otherwise, we, ca we can't. I, mean, I remember when I was uh, young, some used to call their friends uh, with the nicknames of, for example, some celebrities mm -hmm. or some individuals who had some kind of bad acts and, and, and um, um, attributes. I don't want to mention what kind of attributes. So, no, it's, it's not right. It's not allowed for the one to uh, talk about others in, in this way. To, and um, the Quran mentions that don't, don't use such names. Uh, there's a clear verse in the whole Quran. Don't mention such names in which are uh, uh, out of the belief. That's what the physical means, out of the belief, out of the Iman. Sheikh, now, we discussed marriage and the importance of youth getting married, and we discussed the culture of marriage and how you know, it's changed since the time of Rasulullah But what about when one comes to the West? Sometimes it's difficult um, you know, if you live in a remote area where there's not many Muslims and so forth, are the youth allowed to marry? Now, it could be permanent or, or fixed uh, term, um, temporary. Can one youth do uh, a temporary marriage or f marriage with someone from the Ahl kitab I know Ayatollah Sistani has something uh, in regards to this uh, fatwa. What does he say? Well, according to Ayatollah Sistani's fatwa, that for a Muslim, he is allowed to get married to Ahl Kitab, who are the Christian and Jews, uh, the females, um, in a fixed and temporary term that is allowed. However, as an obligatory precaution, ihtiyat wujubi, not to get married to them uh, as indefinite and long term marriage. Um, that's uh, the issue with the Ahl Kitab. So, temporary, yes. Long term, no, as a obligatory precaution. However, Ayatollah Shirazi, Hafizullah, would say that um, it is permissible, um, uh, provided that the marriage is done through the aqid, the nikah aqid, uh, correctly, either by the two sides or by representing mm -hmm. somebody to uh, read the aqid, the, the imam or the maulana, and so forth. And of course, the Sayyid mentions that uh, with regard to marrying to the non Ahl Kitab, uh, other than the Ahl Kitab, we aren't allowed to get married, either fixed or long term marriage. Um, so, with this regard, we cannot get married to those who, uh, for example, don't believe in the Old or New Testament, the books of the mm -hmm. Holy Books, uh, the Christian and the Jews, other than, than uh, those uh, religions. And um, other than the Ahl Kitab, the one cannot get married to an, any other religions and, and faiths. Ahsant. Sheikhna, in regards to coming towards the West, sometimes due to you know, politics, there is a, you know, like a, a campaign towards Muslims, which is not a positive one. Uh, you know, we, we, it was quite famous in, in the USA, Muslims have a bad name. Uh, also here in London, we've had a, a rise in Islamophobia. Um, so what are the duties of the youth when it comes to you know, Islam being attacked by non-Muslims? Uh, what is the duties of these youth living here in the West? According to Sumat al-Sayyid, he would say that it is obligatory for uh, the youth to defend Islam whenever it is attacked by uh, um, those who did not understand uh, the Islam correctly from inside out. They just followed the media coverage against Islam. Um, those who are ignorant about Islam. So it is our responsibility and ob obligation as youth, for example, to respond back to those who attack Islam and raise doubts and suspicions. And we try to respond to these suspicions and, and, and doubts. 
uh, in which they try to uh, spread and propagate in social media and uh, the news media and so forth. Ah, sent. Sheikh, now we discussed health uh, amongst uh, the youth, and you know, one great way of being healthy is actually to participate in sports. The Olympic Games, is this Islamically, is this permissible? You see, the Olympic Games and such like games, sports, uh, which are um, number one performed in the stadiums, for example, and number two are shown on the screens around the world. To watch them or to participate in them, you have to make sure that there is no haram involved in either watching or participating yourself inside that stadium or behind the screens. Um, because sometimes you see that there are uh, participants in the sports activities from both genders, male and female. Mm -hmm. And if the female is not wearing properly, Appropriate clothing. Um, the male cannot watch and see mm. uh, the activities of that uh, sports. And likewise, if the male is not wearing the clothes uh, appropriately, then the same thing applies to the females. They can't watch this male who is playing sports. So it depends if there is a haram scenes, then, then you cannot watch or participate. Sometimes they ask the female participant to wear specific clothes, and she's a Muslim. She came from a Muslim country. Then she's not allowed to participate in this case because it's haram. She has to take part of their clothes or to wear very tight clothes. So uh, the rule is you have to go back to uh, the ahkam. If there is a haram, you can't. If there's no haram issue, let's say they're all gents, they're all male, and there's no... Uh, issue about the clothing or other haram accident, that's fine. Shaykh, what about, because I, I know uh, from, you know, the, the history of Rasulullah from the Seerah, he was very keen on wrestling and he used to encourage wrestling, swimming, horse riding, you know, wrestling, uh, even boxing, very popular today. Um, are these permissible? Again, uh, we go back to the issue of of, uh, if there is any haram involved in these sports, again, if there is a severe harm to the uh, bodily harm to that individual through wrestling or through boxing, then that's an issue we have to consider. That, that, that causes, for example, death. That's another issue we have to consider. And there, has, there has been cases. Yes, this is, the, this is the thing. So early if, as well. If there is a bodily, yeah. bodily harm, um, then that's an, another issue. Uh, that the ulama uh, uh, discuss about this kind of activities. Um, however, if there's no haram that they can watch and participate, that's fine. Again, same questions, the previous question we asked. Shaykh, here in the West, especially here in the UK, football is one of the most prominent and most popular sports. Um, are we allowed to participate, especially when you know, there's like a competition and there's prize money available or like, you know, each individual receives uh, some sort of gift. Some... Well, you see, if the prize is paid by a third party, not the players themselves, there's a thir third party, there's, I don't know... A sponsor that's Sponsors kind of, yeah, or whoever, the the companies, uh, whoever uh, are uh, sponsoring this game. If it's paid by them, that's fine. But if it's paid by the players themselves, by the two sides, then it becomes haram. Okay. So, we have to see the, uh, the, the scenarios and the cases. Okay, so if there's two teams, both, let's say, put in £50 each, winner takes £100, this is haram, yeah, that's betting, we can't yeah. part yes. participate in such, yeah. a, such a game. Exactly, yes. It has to be paid by a third party. Sheikh, you mentioned within sport that because women wear certain clothing, you know, it's, it's uh, haram for the male to watch that sport. What about... You know, in terms of like non-hijab, in schools, sometimes, uh, you know, there's teachers. Some of them are young, some of them don't wear hijab, um, you know, and, and uh, the, you know, the boys are um, forced to participate in the lesson. Um, is it permissible for them to, you know, to look and, and, and to participate in the lesson or should they, you know, refrain from going to the lesson? Well, the Sayyid says if she is a non-Muslim initially, and 
the one who is looking is not looking with lust, with shahwa. He's looking just to get the information uh, from the teacher. And of course, there's no alternative. Sometimes you're given options. You know, you have a male teacher and a female teacher. And you can't choose the male, but you just ignore it because the female is better, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's no alternative. That's your teacher, that's it. You have no option. And also they say it says that um, there is no objection if it is uh, restricted to the minimum requirement. So if it is just a requirement of seeking the knowledge or getting the information this much, it would be fine. Otherwise, it's a mushkil. So you keep it to the minimum requirement. So you don't just stare and look continuously. Uh, so you look to the requirements of your need mm. in your study. To participate. Yeah. Just to participate. Mm. So don't okay. stare and so. keep looking. But th mm. Because the one might fall into the last and temptation. I mean, there's, there's also, uh, you know, an issue of, of, you know, like you said, for youth to free mix and, and, and to have the proper akhlaq when there's free mixing going on. Um, sometimes, you know, there's maybe... Maybe maybe it's innocent, maybe it's not, I'm not sure. But there's like joking with the non mahram um, you know, teasing one another playfully. Because, you know, with, with boys, especially boys when they're young, they, they tease one another. It's just how they get along and it's, it's all fun and games. Sometimes females get involved as well. Sometimes it's, you know, directed towards females. non mahram um, water fights, you know. The, the boys will be throwing water on each other, especially on a hot day. And then, you know, they, they, uh, one of their friends who's a female or female uh, colleague, you know, they may do a, spray a little bit of water on her. Is this allowed? Is this, is this, is this akhlaq acceptable? These are the tools and the means of, of Satan, Shaitan, in which it can penetrate through the hearts of the youth and, and grab them towards the committing of haram. Because the, the end result would be uh, some kind of relationships. Now, we don't want to go too much and further. But these are all the key towards the vice acts at the end of the day. So the Islam from the day one and, and first step tells the mu'min and mu'min to stay away from such uh, acts and such relationships. So you stay away, you respect the, the opposite gender as a colleague, as a, as a fellow uh, student in the class, that's it. To go more than that, it will uh, initiate um, problems, uh, shari problems, and maybe consequences. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on this episode of Hakam SOS. If you have a question you'd like to uh, send in towards the Sheikh, please contact us on Ahkam SOS, uh, A H K A M S O S, at imamhussein.tv. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Uh, 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 u